Hello there, <clears throat> I'm Black Bright and um, I'm sure you've seen this video going around with this police unarmed, with this not unarmed, with this plainclothes police officer beating a boy with a baton. Now a baton is made out of metal, wood, rubber, it could be made out of any of those kind of materials. So it's the kind of instrument, they call it a compliance tool, but it's the kind of instrument that you can hit somebody with, it, dum it dulls the senses and it doesn't leave much of a mark. So, um, and I think that is quite deliberate. That's why they use that tool. Now, this boy, he's saying, I'm a child, I'm a child. He's 17, so he's a minor and he's being handcuffed, he's handcuffed, and he's being beaten by a police officer, and I know a petition's going around, um, and, you know, he's not resisting arrest, so to me, this is disproportionate force. This is, so something is going on here, and it's more than meets the eye. So I'm going to show you the video, you've probably seen it all, I'm not going to show you all of it, because it's evident what, it, what the message is, but the surrounding factors, that's what I'm going to analyze or look at. It stopped my video, so I'm not going to show much of it. But the first thing is, is that he's a minor. The second thing is, is that um, the police officer is treating him in that way in public. There are people watching and there's an unwritten rule or unsaid rule that you don't, interf you don't interfere with the police carrying out their duty, even if their behavior is wrong, you know, and that is because of a lot of things. Sometimes, especially if it's black people who are watching something like that, the only thing they feel they can do that can help is to take a video. People will be saying, why don't they do something? But we don't know the background of the observers. Some of them, they may not be legal in the country. They might have criminal um, offences themselves, convictions themselves. They might want to go back to their families. They know the history of uh, police brutality. And when you see something like that, do you want to get yourself involved? We're living in a society now where people don't want to get involved regardless of how bad a situation is. And that is where we've reached. Now, the background to this particular story the, the alleged background is that this boy and another boy, both under 18, were caught with the intent of supplying, um, possessing and supplying Class B drugs. Now, for those of you who don't know what Class B drugs are, it's like amphetamines, it's codeine, it's cannabis, it's spice, it's stuff like that. They're not as dangerous as Class A drugs. So he's allegedly got caught supplying these drugs, but the other guy got away. Now, what I'm wondering now is, is this boy paying for the fact that the other got away. Is this what's making that police officer incensed? Is he dishing out capital punishment to teach him a lesson? Does he feel um, undermined by the other person getting away? Did he have a bad day? Is he angry? I mean, regardless of the reasons, you, you know, if you have a job like that, you need to have emotional intelligence. You need to be able to separate your emotions from your actions. But obviously, in this particular case, the police officer is unable to do that. Who knows whether or not he came from a damaged background, if he's, you know, violent, um, racist. We don't know the backgrounds of these police officers. And I did a video a while ago about what training do these police officers have? 
you know, they're so desperate for police officers that they take on anybody. They don't investigate their background, providing they fulfill a certain criteria. I mean, of course, they can't have been to prison, but providing they fulfill a certain criteria, they've got the job. There's no assessment of uh, as to what where their mind is at, whether they're fair human beings, whether they're normal human beings, whether or not they have mental issues. They don't do those kind of, um, and they don't do that analysis. They just have to complete a test, and I think the test isn't very long, and that's it. They're a police officer, and these are the police officers that you see dishing out this kind of treatment to young boys, minors. Now, technically, Class B drugs, they carry a penalty for possession uh, of five up to five years in prison. Now, if you're caught supplying it, which is what the police officers said these two boys were doing, they found the other boy afterwards. They probably beat it out of this one where he was. Um, but they found the other guy afterwards. So, um, and allegedly, if you're caught supplying, which is what they say they did, um, it carries a 15 year, a 14 year imprisonment sentence. So it's interesting that they had these two boys in the police station and they were both released. So what does that tell you about the facts of this case and what is happening, what we see and what is actually happening? You know, it's really quite, it is uncomfortable, it is disturbing. And Lee Jasper is talking about things like this can cause a riot. I think that it's not so much things like this would cause a riot. I mean, I think young people are more likely to step up than the older generation who still have that colonial mentality, who still want to toe the line, who still know the rules of the game, because that is how they were brought up. But it's going to take, um, I don't know what it's going to take for things to change because um, that kind of mindset is inherent in the person. Now, not all police officers are like that, but there are certain police officers that make it bad for all police officers. And this is one of them. He's got issues. He's got problems. He shouldn't be allowed on the streets. And the sad thing is, is that even though when it's investigated by the IPCC, who are supposed to overlook police behaviour, a lot of them, they get off. And that is what's so frustrating. They justify that behaviour by saying, oh, you know, they, they, one of them was attacking the police officer. There's no evidence to show that or they was running off. But regardless, the boy is handcuffed. He cannot be a resisting arrest. And therefore, if you're if he's handcuffed and you're beating him, that is disproportionate. You know, when they talk about um, a lot in the law, they're talking about, you know, your right to defend yourself and when whether or not you go to jail or, you know, what what um, kind of outcome you have depends on whether or not the action you took is proportionate. If somebody came in, broke into your house and they're unarmed and you slash them up with a knife or you you should give them 10 bullets. That is disproportionate because they've come in unarmed. And this is a similar situation. This boy is unarmed and therefore the police, the un, um, the undercover, whatever kind of police officer he is, plain clothes, is using disproportionate force on that boy. And that is the alarming thing. It's alarming that people are watching it and feel that they cannot do anything to do anything about it. They would love to do something about it, but they're afraid for their own protection, their own issues, whatever's going on in their lives. They don't feel as though they can intervene. That's that's my take on it. That's how I perceive that situation. I don't know if I saw that situation, what I would do. I think I would go over to the police officer and I think, you know, from what I do know and my engagement with, um, police officers, I think I would challenge him and um, because I, well, I know certain things about what they're supposed to do from what they're not. So I think I would challenge him. But I guess a lot of those people may not have known their rights. There was a lot of swearing in the background. There was a lot of frustration. People were incensed. But 
it's interesting that that police officer did not care about who was watching. It's almost like he was daring them. What are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? As he lifts his baton, what are you going to do? You ain't going to do squat because you are weak. You're conditioned to be weak. You're conditioned not to intervene. We've got you tapped. So that's the way I interpret that situation. It might be different for other people. Um, I wrote down a few things. Let me make sure that I have gotten everything down. Um, oh, my nose is running. Yeah, I think I've got everything down now this time. Anyway, have a wonderful day. Work good. Keep yourself safe. Stay blessed. Love on all.